Today, we will talk about isomorphisms of vector spaces. The concept of isomorphism is ubiquitous in mathematics. It's a way to express the idea that two different objects are essentially the same. So we'll start with the definitions. So let f be a function between two sets. So f is defined on a set A and assumes values in a set B. So definition we say that f is bijective if for every element b in the set b there exists a unique element a in the set a such that f of a is equal to b. Pictorially, this can be expressed in the following way. So suppose we have some set a and uh, another set b and uh, our function assigns to each element of the first set one element of the second set in such a way that it creates a one-to-one -one correspondence. And uh, so this is another name for uh, this word bi bijective or so bijection. is uh, the same as one-to-one -one correspondence. And um, so what's important for us is that every element of uh, the set B has a unique preimage, right? So, so this means that um, for each element in the second set, there is an arrow that goes to this uh, element from the first set and there is only one such arrow. So we, we don't have two elements of set A that are mapped to the same element of the set B. Now let us see how this idea plays out in the context of vector spaces. Let V and W be two vector spaces. over the same field F. Definition. A function T with the uh, domain V and uh, assuming values uh, in W is uh, called an uh, isomorphism of uh, vector spaces if T is uh, bijective So this means that for each element of vector space W there exists a unique preimage and it satisfies two properties. One, for all vectors V1 and V2 in V we have t of the sum v1 plus v2 is equal to t 
of v1 plus t of v2. And the second property for every v in the vector space v and for every scalar c in the field f, t of c times v is equal to c times t of v. So if we have a bijective function between two vector spaces that satisfies these two relations, so basically these relations say that this function is compatible with the vector space structure. So then such uh, a function is called an isomorphism. And uh, we say that two vector spaces V and W are isomorphic if there exists an uh, isomorphism T from V to W. Now, let us point out one consequence uh, of this definition. So, if T is uh, an isomorphism, so then this implies that T of a zero vector, so T transforms a zero vector into a zero vector in the space W. And to prove this, set the scalar to be zero in uh, this property two, right? So because uh, if we pick um, any vector, right? So, so, or for example, we can even pick zero vector, right? So we can take c equals zero and v also to be zero, right? So we get zero times zero vector is equal to zero times t of a zero vector, right? And uh, then uh, on the left, we have t of a zero vector, right? So if we multiply zero vector by zero scalar, we still have zero vector. And on the right, if we have uh, any vector and multiply it by zero scalar, then we know that the result is a zero vector. And so this shows that uh, t transforms a zero vector into a zero vector. Let us look at some examples. So it's the first example. So let us say that vector spaces M22 of F and F4 are isomorphic. Now, what are these spaces? So M to 2 of F, so these are 2 by 2 matrices with entries in F. And uh, so F4, so this is a four component vectors with entries in uh, the, the same field F. So let us uh, construct an isomorphism between these two vector spaces. So we need to construct T from M to 2 of F to F4. And uh, we define this in the following way. So if we have a matrix A, B, C, D, then we transform this vector, this matrix, into a vector with four columns, four components, A, B, C, and D. Now, 
So this is uh, our um, function, our transformation. So here the input is a two by two matrix and the output is a vector with four components. So what we need to show, so in order to prove that this is an isomorphism, we need to show three things. That this function is bijective and it satisfies uh, these two properties uh, of an isomorphism of vector spaces. What is the bijective property means? So it means the following, that for every vector a, b, c, d in F4, there exists a unique matrix in M22 of F, say call this matrix A, such that T of A is equal to A, B, C, D. But this is uh, obvious because by our definition, the only matrix that can be transformed into A, B, C, D is the matrix A, B, C, D like this, right? So, so it's clear that every vector in F4 has a unique preimage in uh, the set of matrices uh, over the field F. Now let us discuss compatibility with the vector space structure. What um, property one says uh, in uh, this context? So here we take arbitrary pair of matrices. So A1, which is A1, B1, C1, D1 and A2, which is uh, A2, B2, C2, and D2. And what we need to show is that T of A1 plus A2 is equal to T of A1 plus T of A2. Now, to prove this equality, what we do is we compute the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and uh, we show that the results are the same. So let's take the left-hand side. So here we have T of A1 plus A2. So this is uh, T applied to a sum of two matrices, A1, B1, C1, D1, plus A2, B2, C2, D2. Now, how do we add two matrices? We add two matrices component-wise. So this is equal to T of uh, the following sum of two matrices. We have A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, C1 plus C2, and D1 plus D2. And now we use uh, our transformation. We know that a matrix is transformed into a column vector in uh, this simple way. So this means that this matrix is going to be transformed in the following four component vector. We have A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, C1 plus C2, and D1 plus D2. Now let us look at the right hand side. So in the right hand side here we have T of A1 plus T of A2. So this is T of the matrix A1, B1, C1, D1 plus T of the matrix A2, B2, C2, D2. Now so our transformation transforms matrices into four component vectors. So the first matrix is transformed into vector A1, B1, C1, D1. And the second matrix is transformed into 
a four component vector a2, b2, c2, d2. And now we add these two four component vectors. And vectors are also added component wise. So the result is going to be a1 plus a2, b1 plus b2, c1 plus c2, and d1 plus d2. And uh, so what we see is that uh, the result of computation of the left hand side is exactly the same as uh, the result of uh, computation of the right hand side. So this shows us that uh, this property holds. Right? Uh, and uh, so the second property I leave uh, for you as an exercise. So kind of phrased in terms of matrices. So this will say that T of K times A is equal to K times T of A, right? So here it's better to use uh, the scalar K instead of C because we use C in here inside the matrix. All right, and so this is an exercise. So let me point out one detail uh, in uh, this definition and in this example. So here in the left hand side, so this addition operation is carried out in the space V. Whereas in the right hand side, so the same addition is carried out uh, in the space W. And here we essentially show that uh, addition in V corresponds to addition in W when we apply transformation T. And uh, so here in this example, we could see that here this plus we add to four component vectors, whereas uh, in this addition here, we add to two matrices. Let's consider our second example. Here we say that the space of uh, quadratic polynomials So let's call it V, which it's the set of AX squared plus BX plus C, where A, B, and C belong to some field F. So this vector space is isomorphic to the space F3. And uh, so to prove this, we construct an isomorphism. So we construct a map T from vector space V into F3. And uh, clearly, the way to do it, so we define that a polynomial AX squared plus BX plus C is transformed into a three component vector ABC. And uh, so we need to show, so we need to show that T is uh, an isomorphism, which incorporates three properties. So the first property, we need to show that uh, it's bijective. And then two more properties is that uh, it's compatible with the vector space structure. So bijective. So what does it mean? So this means that uh, for every vector, a, B, C in F3, there exists a unique quadratic polynomial P such that T 
t of p is equal to abc. But uh, this property is obvious because by our definition of the transformation, it's clear that the only polynomial that goes to vector abc is this one. It's ax squared plus bx plus c. And for every, so this means that every vector has a preimage, and this preimage is unique. So this means that uh, this transformation is bijective. And uh, now we check compatibility with vector space operations. So here we take two polynomials, p1, which is a1x squared plus b1x plus c1, and p2, which is a2x squared plus b2x plus c2. And we need to show, so we need to show that t of p1 plus p2 is equal to t of p1 plus t of p2. Again, let us work out the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So for the left-hand side, we have t of p1 plus p2. So what is this? This is t applied to the sum of two polynomials a1x squared plus b1x plus c1 plus a2x squared plus b2x plus c2. Now, let's um, add these two polynomials. So let's simplify this polynomial expression. That's t of a1 plus a2x squared plus b1 plus b2 x plus c1 plus c2. And uh, now let us uh, check our definition of t. So transformation t transforms this polynomial in a three-component vector. So this means that this polynomial gets transformed into vector with first component a1 plus a2, the second component b1 plus b2, and the third component, c1 plus c2. Now, let us look at the right-hand side. In the right-hand side, we have t of p1 plus t of p2. So that is t of the polynomial a1x squared plus b1x plus c1 plus t of the second polynomial a2x squared plus b2x plus c2. Now, the first polynomial is transformed into a three-component vector a1, b1, c1, and the second polynomial is transformed into a three-component vector a2, b2, c2. So when we add these vectors, we get a1 plus a2, b1 plus b2, c1 plus c2. And what we see is that we arrived at the same result as for the left-hand side. So what we see that right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. And uh, so this establishes uh, uh, this uh, property uh, here, right? So this is now established. And then there is the second property that I will leave as an exercise. We need to show that t of k times p, if we multiply a polynomial by the scalar, is the same as uh, multiplying t of p by the same scalar. And uh, so this I leave as an exercise for you. So as our next example, so let us show that the space of uh, vectors on 
Euclidean plane. is isomorphic to R2. Right, so, so what we do here is we take Euclidean plane and we consider our vectors on Euclidean plane. Um, of course, with understanding that two vectors are equal if they form a parallelogram. And we define the operations of addition and multiplications of these vectors by a real number. So this means that the set of vectors on the Euclidean plane forms uh, a vector space. So we are claiming that this uh, vector space is isomorphic to R2. So let us um, prove this. So here, so the first order of business is to construct the actual isomorphism between vectors on Euclidean plane and R2. And uh, what we do is the following. So we uh, consider an arbitrary triangle on a plane. So A, B, C. So we take any three points that are not on the same line and we consider this triangle. So next we consider two vectors. So A from B and from A to C. From our discussion of uh, vectors on the Euclidean plane, we know that this pair of vectors, AB and AC, form a basis. Now we can construct our actual isomorphism between R2 and uh, this space of vectors on Euclidean plane, let's call this space V. And uh, so we construct this transformation from R2 to V in the following way. So we take a vector from R2, it's a two-component vector with uh, scalars in real numbers. And we transform this two-component vector into a linear combination of our basis vectors. So k1 times ab plus k2 times ac. So now we have our three things to, to prove. So we need to prove that it is bijective and uh, that it is compatible with the vector space structure. Now, what bijectivity property mean? So it means that any vector from uh, our Euclidean plane has uh, a preimage, as a unique preimage as a two component vector. Now, we know that any vector on this plane can be drawn with a starting point at A. So what we need to show is that for any vector AD in V, there exist K1 and K2 in real numbers such that T of K1, K2 is equal to AD. But, so we know that our vectors AB and AC form a basis. And one of the properties of a basis is, uh, so from properties of a basis, we have that every vector AD is a linear combination of uh, our basis vectors AB and AC. So this means that uh, there exist K1 and K2 in R. 
such that AD is equal to K1 times AB plus K2 times AC. But that is precisely T of K1, K2. So what we proved here is uh, that every vector on this Euclidean plane has a preimage in R2. So, so to construct this preimage, we decompose a, any vector as a linear combination of A, B, and A, C. And uh, so the coefficients of this linear combination give us uh, the vector in R2 that gets mapped into this vector A, D. So this, however, is not enough for bijectivity because uh, we proved that any vector has a preimage in R2. But we also need to show that this preimage is unique. So, so unique preimage. So how do we prove this? So suppose um, some vector AD has two preimages. So it's T of K1, K2, but also it's T of another vector from R2, S1, S2. So we need to show that if we have this equality, then actually these two vectors must be the same. So what does it mean? So this means that the, this equality means that K1 times AB plus K2 times AC is equal to S1 times AB plus S2 times AC. Now, if we move everything to one, hand, one side, so this will tell us that K1 minus S1 times AB plus K2 minus S2 times AC is equal to a zero vector. But again, we have that these two vectors form a basis. And we had the, our second property of a basis is that uh, if a linear combination of two basis vectors is equal to the zero vector, then both coefficients of this linear combination must be zero. So in other words, well, our two properties of a basis here is that the first property is the spanning property. Right? So this means that every vector AD is a linear combination of a basis vectors. And the second property is linear independence property. Right? So from here, we conclude that K1 minus S1 is equal to zero. And K2 minus S2 is also equal to zero. And that means that K1 is equal to S1 and K2 is equal to S2. So these two vectors then are equal. So the vector K1, K2 is equal to vector S1, S2. So if we assume that two vectors from R2 get mapped to the same vector AD, so then this uh, shows that these two vectors must be actually the same. And this tells us that every vector AD from the space V has a unique preimage in the space R2. So this means that uh, indeed this uh, transformation is bijective. Now let us investigate compatibility of this transformation with um, the operations of vector spaces. So here we need to show that T of uh, of the sum, so that the sum of uh, two vectors is uh, mapped to the sum of the images. And again, we verify this by computing the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So for the left-hand side, we have, so we have T of K1, K2 plus S1, S2 is T 
of so we add these two vectors so it's k1 plus s1 k2 plus s2 and uh, then a two component vector is mapped into a linear combination so this is mapped to k1 plus s1 times a b plus k2 plus s2 times a c now let's compute the right hand side so for the right hand side we have t of k1 k2 plus t of s1 s2 so the first gets mapped to linear combination k1 a b plus k2 a c and the second gets mapped to s1 a b plus s2 a c and uh, so this is equal to k1 plus s1 a b plus k2 plus s2 a c and again we see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so this proves uh, our second property of the isomorphism and uh, the last property i leave as an exercise right so here we need to show that t of uh, a constant times k1 k2 is equal to c times t of k1 k2 so this is an exercise now let us state the main theorem of today's lecture let v be a vector space over a field f of dimension n then v is isomorphic to the space fn of uh, n component vectors with entries in f so let's give a proof So what we know, well, V is a finite dimensional vector space. So we know that uh, an n-dimensional vector space has a basis with n vectors, V1 through Vn. Now we fix this basis and we construct a map T from uh, Fn to V in the following way. So we say that T of K1, K2, dot, 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 Kn is equal to k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus kn vn so first of all we need to show that t is bijective what does it mean so t is bijective means that for every vector u in v there exists a unique vector w in fn such that t of w is equal to u if we want to prove that some property holds for every vector in v then we do the following mental trick so we say let 
u be an arbitrary vector in v. Now, if we can prove the property, whatever we need, for an arbitrary vector, this proves it for all vectors in the vector space. And so, when we need to prove that something holds for all objects, then uh, what we do instead is we prove that this property holds for an arbitrary object uh, in our space. So, what we have is we have a basis here, right? So, we know that um, our set v1 through vn spans v, right? So, because uh, a basis is a linearly independent uh, subset that spans the vector space. So, what does it mean that the set spans v? This means that an arbitrary vector can be written as a linear combination of basis vectors. So, this tells us that there exist scalars C1 through Cn in F such that U is a linear combination C1 V1 plus Cn Vn. But that means, so this implies that T apply to the following n component vectors c1, c2, cn, which is this linear combination. So, this is simply equal to u. And uh, so, this shows that, so we have uh, a pre-image w for our vector u, right? So, so this, if we take this n component vector w, then T of W is equal to U. So, this means that our arbitrary vector has a preimage. Now, we need to show that this preimage is unique. So, to prove this, so uniqueness. So, to prove uniqueness, we make an assumption that two vectors are mapped to the same uh, vector U. That U is uh, T of C1 Cn, and also it is T of K1 Kn. Now, what this equality would mean? This equality, using our definition of T, means that C1 V1 plus dot 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 Cn Vn is equal to K1 V1 plus dot 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 k n v n. And again, let's bring everything to the left hand side. So, this implies that c1 minus k1 v1 plus c n minus k n v n is equal to zero. But again, we recall that we have a basis, and the basis is uh, linearly independent. So, from uh, linear independence, we know that if a linear combination of this set of vectors is equal to a zero vector, then by definition of linear independence, all coefficients of these linear combinations must be equal to zero. So, we have C1 minus K1 is equal to zero and Cn minus Kn is also equal to zero. But then this means that C1 is equal to K1 and, um, and so on, Cn is equal to Kn, and so this implies that the vector C1 Cn is equal to the n component vector K1 Kn. And uh, we proved exactly what we had to prove. So, we proved that uh, uh, any vector cannot have two distinct preimages. So, the preimage of any vector exists. So, this is, was our first step. And now we prove that uh, not only it exists, but it's also unique. So, next we verify compatibility of uh, this map with the operations uh, of um, 
our vector spaces. So here we need to prove that t of uh, the sum of two vectors, so if we have k1 up to kn plus c1 up to cn, so this is equal to t of k1 up to kn plus t of c1 up to cn. And uh, again we compute the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So for the left-hand side, so if we add these two we get t of k1 plus c1 up to kn plus cn. And uh, so this gets transformed into linear combination k1 plus c1 v1 plus kn plus cn vn. But for the right hand side we have um, the t of k1 kn plus t of c1 cn. So that equals to k1 v1 plus kn vn plus c1 v1 plus cn vn. And what we get here, so taking the sum, we get k1 plus c1 v1 plus kn plus cn vn. And uh, comparing these two we see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So this means that uh, this property holds and uh, so the final property is um, left as an exercise, right? So, the, so we, one needs to show that t of uh, a constant times C k1 kn is equal to c times t of k1 to kn. And that's an exercise. So now this completes the proof of this theorem. And uh, basically the takeaway from this theorem is uh, that uh, for finite dimensional vector spaces, two vector spaces are isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. Because uh, both of these uh, vector spaces will be um, isomorphic to Fn. Now, the remaining part of this lecture will have nothing to do with linear algebra. So here I wanted to discuss the concept of isomorphism in a wider sense and uh, play some games with you. So let's uh, consider the following game. So let's take the following set of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, so the game is like this. So two players say uh, red and blue claim in turns numbers from uh, this set. And once uh, the um, number is claimed, then it goes into the sack of uh, the player who claimed it, and it's removed from this set. And um, so to win the game, a player must claim three numbers that add up to 
to 15. All right, so this is the game. Now let's uh, try to play this game. Okay, so suppose, uh, so we have the pile of red here and uh, another pile of blue. Okay, so suppose uh, red goes first and claims seven. Right, so this means that now seven is uh, is captured here. All right, so um, say blue goes second, and uh, well, I don't know. Suppose blue claims eight. So now it's uh, red's turn, and uh, so suppose red is going to claim three. Now, what's um, the blue's move? So, uh, so blue cannot win right now, right? Uh, seven plus three is ten. So if on the next move red claims five, then red would win. So for this reason, blue has to claim five. Right? So now, so red cannot claim five. So, so this means that red cannot win on the next move. But uh, let's look what happens with the blue. Eight plus five, that's uh, 13. So if blue claims two, then blue will, move, will win the game. So this means that for the red not to lose, red must claim two. All right. So now blue cannot win in the next move because uh, we have uh, two is already claimed. Now what happens uh, with red? So let's see if blue can uh, not lose. So, so there are the following pairs here. So 7-3 that will require a 5 but five is not available for a red. Three plus two, that's five, and five uh, requires a 10, but 10 is not here. So this pair is also safe for blue. Uh, there is also seven and two. Seven and two is nine together. So if red claims six, then uh, this will be 15. So this means that in order not to lose, Blue must claim six here. All right. So now we can see that um, all red's moves, winning moves, are already blocked by blue. So let's see what uh, happens uh, if blue can win on the next move. So we have eight plus five, that's 13. Well, we already blocked this by claiming two. Eight plus six. That's uh, 14. So this means that if blue captures one, then uh, blue will win. So this means that red must claim one here. But what do we have here? Five plus six is 11, right? And 11 plus four, is uh, 15, right? So if uh, blue claims four, then blue wins, right? So because five plus six plus four is equal to 15, right? So, so blue claimed uh, three numbers that add up to 15. Now I have a question to you. Have you ever played this game? Um, if not, so I suggest that uh, you kind of stop this video here and go and play this game with your friends and see if you can develop uh, good strategies to play this game. And so just give, uh, get some experience with this game. And uh, think whether you 
have seen this game before or not, right? So now take your time. In the rest of this class, there is nothing that's going to be on the final exam. So uh, play this game for a while and then come back and finish this video. All right, welcome back. So uh, one, so now that I got you back, so let me tell you that uh, in fact every single person in this uh, class uh, have played this uh, game many times and uh, you know everything about uh, winning strategies in this game. But in order to realize this, so we need to see that this game is isomorphic to another game which uh, everybody knows. And this other game is uh, the game of tick tac toe right. And so if you know how to play tick tac toe then uh, you will know how to play this game. And uh, so basically, so what I'm trying to say is that this game of picking three numbers that add up to 15 is isomorphic to the game of tic-tac-toe. But this isomorphism between these two games is uh, uh, not at all obvious. And uh, to construct the isomorphism between these two games, we need something which is called the magic square. So what's a magic square? So a magic square is a three by three square filled with numbers from one to nine that um, uh, has the property that everything here adds up to 15 in each row and each column. Okay, so let's see. So here in this row, the sum is 15, so is here, and so is here. So then in columns, we have 15, 15, and 15. And also on the diagonals. So we have 15 on this diagonal and 15 on this diagonal, right? So this is called the magic square. So now I'm claiming that uh, using the magic square, I can construct an isomorphism between tic-tac-toe and uh, this game of 15. <laughs>